Welcome back. I want to talk about alerting for Microsoft Endpoint DLP. But before I do, I'm going to pull up my DLP policy and inside my advanced DLP rule, I'm going to scroll down to where it says incident reports. And I want to point out the severity level they can customize here. So you can set to low, medium, or high. Now again, you could have multiple rules and multiple policies, all with different type of severity levels, whatever your organizational requirements dictate. But also, when it creates an alert, it will also send an alert to an admin. And I can even have it go to a distribution list, or I can have it go to a mail-enabled security group if I want. So keep that in mind. The other thing here is I can have it send an alert every time, or I can have it send an alert in an aggregated approach. Now to do that, you have to meet some specific licensing requirements. And I'll put a link to this article in the video description so you can learn more about that. Okay, so once I have my policy set up, um, I can go ahead and start to receive alerts to this email address. Here's what one of those uh, alerts look like. And here you can see the alert where a DLP policy was matched. Uh, this is where the user tried to upload a file to the cloud. Uh, the DLP policy was triggered and it was triggered due to a custom sense of information type, so probably a keyword. And the instance count was one and the confidence level was 30 and it triggered for a user Megan Bowen. So that's what the email alert looks like if you have that set up. So if we go back to compliance.microsoft.com, click on policies, click on data loss prevention, we'll have alerts. And from here, this is where I can browse all the different alerts that get generated. So let's go ahead and refresh this for a moment. And here's some alerts I recently created. Let's take a look at a few of these. So let's click on one. Here's an alert where it looks like um, something happened. So if we click on events, and we click on sensitive info here, I can learn a little bit more about what happened. So this is an endpoint DLP alert because location is set to device. And here we have a file that uh, is a name of Project Falcon with sensitivity label. Uh, this file triggered the policy Project Falcon label. And the action that the user tried to take was they tried to print the file. So that's why the DLP policy triggered. And um, there you have it. Now, if I go to sense of information types, this is where I could see if a sense of information type was associated with this, but it wasn't because this actually had a sensitivity label on the file. Now, if we come back here to, um, if we close out of this and we go back to the main alert, I can click on manage alert, and this is where I can assign the status. So I can say, okay, well, we're investigating it, and maybe uh, I'm gonna assign it to somebody like Adele. Uh, they're currently investigating the alert and then that will save it to the management log. And then also notes it here in the list of alerts. So if you have a operations center that needs to go through these, um, this way you can divvy these up and assign them uh, as appropriate. Let's take a look at a few others here. Here's another alert. And in this alert, looks like this is an endpoint DLP alert because the location is set to device. Uh, it looks like Megan Bowen was our user that uh, triggered the alert. If we go to events, and we click on the name of the event here, we can see a little bit more about it. So here's the host name of the, of the computer, here's the file and its name with its path on that computer. And okay, looks like it matched my Project Falcon uh, DLP policy and it violated my policy by trying to copy data to a USB drive, it looks like. Now this triggered a sense of information type as opposed to a sensitivity label. And again, the instance count was one and it had a 30% confidence. Okay, and if I click on sense of information types, there's that sense of information type that it triggered. So that could be pretty helpful and useful. Let's take a look at another alert here. And this one, Looks like we have, uh, again, another USB copy here, and I can see all my details about the alert. So that's a little bit about alerting. Pretty awesome. Uh, if I click on an alert here and I choose notify users, so we'll give that a moment to appear, this allows me to send an email to those users, um, and it's going to open up my email client here to allow me to do that. And here's the email that you could send to the user, uh, letting them know that they violated a policy if you want to do that. So that can be helpful and useful. Okay, so that's a little bit about alerting. Uh, I'm going to create another video shortly. Uh, give, me, give, me, give me a few more days on how to send these to Sentinel. 
so you can aggregate them in the sim. Uh, but hopefully you found some value in this. This alert pre feature is still in preview, so make sure you take that into consideration. But nonetheless, this can be helpful in monitoring for violations. Okay, folks, we got some more videos coming on Endpoint DLP, so be sure to subscribe if you find value in this video. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next video.